Hello and welcome to Wellbeing Wednesdays. We at the Museums of the University of St Andrews will be encouraging you to take 10 minutes for a break to tune in to Museum Storytime. Our collections are full to the brim of objects that have fascinating stories to tell and this is when we'll tell you them. Thank you Ailey. Hello, I'm Sophie and I will be your host today. I'm here to tell you about a really fascinating piece from the museum collection. A piece of wood from one of the ships from the Spanish Armada that sunk during the 16th century while the war raging between Spain and England. Now, a piece of wood I hear you say may not seem like the most interesting object in the collection, but it does come with a really fascinating history and backstory that I'm sure you'll get to grips with. I myself do love history and stories and I hope that it's one that you'll enjoy too. The best place to start is to give you the backstory behind the object and a sense of what was happening at the time so you can understand the context to which we are talking about. In the 16th century there was a lot of turmoil going on in Scotland but also in England in regards to the church. Henry VIII famously broke away from the Catholic Church in a time what is now known as the Reformation and England became a Protestant nation. His son, Edward VII, followed in his footsteps and, re and England remained a Protestant nation. However, when Edward died, his sister Mary came to the throne, who was a devout Catholic, and England again switched back to being a Catholic nation. Mary was married to King Philip II of Spain, another Catholic who all supported her in her aims. When Mary died, her sister, Elizabeth, Elizabeth I, came to the throne, and England switched back again to being a Protestant nation. Understandably, Philip was not happy with this, and after England interfered with events in the Low Countries, round about parts of modern-day Holland, and the country at the time Philip was at war with, Philip decided to send a fleet to attack England. This is where the story for our little piece of wood begins. To legitimise his attack on England, Philip gained support from the Pope. The Pope decided to name this attack on England a crusade, as it was against the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church's wishes. This allowed Philip to collect more taxes, grant indulgences to his men and gain more support and aid than this who hadn't been named as a crusade and that he wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. Philip then decided to launch a three-pronged attack to attack England. He decided to do a feint or diversion up at the top of Scotland to try and draw forces away. He would then lead the main body of his attack down to the south coast of England around the Isle of Wight and Southampton. This fleet would then meet up with another group of soldiers that would be joined from, from the Low Countries. These were to be led by the Duke of Parma and would be 30,000 men strong and these would be met up with the fleet and then they would take them all across and go up the Thames to London to attack England and do a final blow to the country. On the 28th of May 1588 the Spanish fleet left Lisbon in Portugal with 130 ships, 8,000 sailors, 18,000 soldiers, 1,500 brass guns and 1,000 iron guns, a formidable fleet if there ever was one. As they were travelling northwards, Elizabeth I tried to open peace negotiations with the Duke of Parma in the Low Countries to stop them arriving. The English fleet also tried to stop the fleet as they advanced northwards in the Bay of Biscay, but sadly were unable to do so. On the 6th of July, the peace negotiations fell through and the English fleet awaited the Spanish in Portsmouth, eagerly awaiting to hear if any news of them arriving was coming. The Spanish Armada, however, were delayed by bad storms and bad weather down in the Bay of Biscay and were delayed heavily from when they were anticipated to be arriving. They were eventually sighted off the English coastline on the 19th of July. The English that day were awaiting them in the harbour in Plymouth However, they were trapped that day by falling tides and the tides were far too low to let them out. The Spanish held a council of war to decide what to do about this and whether they should go in and trap the English. However, Philip had not granted authorization for them to do this, so they decided to sail onwards and over the next few days, skirmishes between the two fleets, the English and the Spanish, were held all along the English coastline. The Spanish eventually ran out of coastline and decided to head over to Calais in France and enter the port there where they shaped up and formed a crescent formation awaiting to see what would happen next. At Calais the Spanish were awaiting news from the Duke of Parma and his troops and when they could organise meeting up so that they could go and launch their attack on England. The waters around Calais were very shallow and the Spanish ships were not well equipped for these shallow waters. Because of this the Dutch took advantage and sent in some flyboats which were much better suited for the shallow water to blockade the Spanish in and stop them meeting up with the Duke of Parma. 
the English also got in on this action and on the 28th of July they sent in fire ships to try and break up the Spanish and stop them staying in the port of Calais. The ships themselves did not do much damage but this set off a sequence of events that culminated in the Battle of Gravelines which followed. The battle lasted eight hours during which time the Spanish lost five ships before deciding to flee northwards away from the English. The English pursued them and harried them all the way up to Edinburgh before leaving the Spanish to their doom. The Spanish carried on up round the top of Scotland, which was very hazardous, down through the Hebrides and along through the Channel, back down to Spain. The ships had taken much damage during it and many of the ships couldn't make it back. This piece of wood supposedly comes from one of those ships that fled round the top of Scotland. We know this because of the note that came of it when it was left in our collection. This names the piece of wood as coming from the ship called the Florencia, and it was at Tobermory on the Isle of Mole where it was shipwrecked. However, we know from records that the Florencia actually made it back to Spain, so it's unlikely that it came from this ship. There are also talk in the records of a ship called the Florida, which was named as a Spanish treasure ship that went into myth and could have been possibly from this ship. However, there is no note anywhere that this ship actually existed and was actually included in the fleet. It is more likely that perhaps this piece of wood was coming from the ship called the San Juan de Cecilia, a Sicilian ship the Spanish had commandeered, and we know that is one that was shipwrecked up at the top of Scotland. Anyway, this ship took refuge in Tobermory Bay and in return for supplies aided one of the warring clans in the area. The Scottish clans were still feuding heavily with each other at this time. This clan's chief, Lachlan McCain of Durrit, was in a bitter feud with a clan chief from the Macdonalds, MAC, and either side were trying to best the other. The ship lasted about a month in the area until it mysteriously exploded on the 5th of November 1588. Perhaps this was a forewarning to events that took place on the 5th of November a few years down the line. Maybe they should have listened. But anyway, there are several theories as to what happened with it. Now, there are a number of theories as to what happened to force this ship to explode. One, it was an accident. Simple accident. It can happen. It could have been an explosion, could have been a fire. Some of the sailors could run. Ships easily at this time just exploded because people were careless. A possible explanation. Two, it was Clan MacDonald. They were so enraged with the ship attacking them, they decided to go on board and explode the ship, making sure they couldn't terrorise them any longer. Also plausible. Three, it was a spy from the English government. The English weren't happy that some of these ships were still so close to the shoreline, so they were trying to make sure that it wasn't attacked. One of the people who supplied the ship was actually working for the English government at the time. This merchant was called John Smollett of Dumbarton, and we know that he was working with Sir Francis Walsingham, a chief advisor to Elizabeth I, and also her so-called spy master. Sir Francis Walsingham is a very interesting person and one who comes with a whole plethora of stories you can listen to. Definitely someone to look up, even though we don't have time to talk about him today. But anyway, this merchant supposedly made sure that the ship was blown up, and possibly is the most likely argument as to why it happened. Whatever did happen, the ship went down and was lost to sea and never made it back to Spain. There ending its life. And now to the specifics. This piece of wood is made from oak. It is nineteen point four centimetres in length, seven centimetres high. 3.3 centimetres in diameter. It's quite a sizeable chunk of wood overall. It was presented by Mrs. Dare of South St. Andrews in 1943 to our museum collection. Where it came from before, we do not know, or how it came to be in Mrs. Dare's possession, but it is now with us in the collections today. We also don't really know if this is a piece of wood from the Florencia. All we know about it is from the note that was left when Mrs. Dare presented it to us. We could do tests on the wood and see whether it was linked to any of the ships at the time. However, the shipwreck ship off the coast of Tobermory, whatever its name, there is nothing left for us to look at. Because of the prevalence that it was a treasure ship, there has been much interest in it over the years. The Duke of Monmouth famously in 1729 decided to explode the wreckage to see what else he could salvage from it. 
What we do know is it's become a fascinating story to add to the collection and one that maybe we can prove or look into further in the future. Now all there is left to do is to say a big thank you of course to Mrs Dare for presenting this piece of wood to add to our collections and more importantly a big thank you to you all for listening today. I do hope you have enjoyed it and have learnt some more about one of the fascinating pieces in our collection. Bye!